NASA is getting its James Webb Space Telescope ready to provide some answers about other planets in the far reaches of our Milky Way galaxy. This summer, scientists will be examining ground surfaces and atmospheres of these planets and their relationship to the sun in their own solar systems. They are called super Earths because of their size and because they are solid planets rather than gas, but that might be where the similarities actually end. Joining me now with more is Assistant Astronomer at the Space Telescope Science Institute, Nestor Espinoza. Nestor, thank you for being here. It's all really exciting, the possibilities that, uh, that this new telescope has in store for us. So tell us, what are scientists most hoping to learn from examining these other planets? Yeah, no, it's an honor to be here. Uh, well, from from exoplanets, we really are just scratching the surface so far. Um, we've discovered thousands of them out there. We know they exist, but really, what we don't know about is what they're made of. Like, what what's inside them? Do they have atmospheres? Uh, do they have water? Do they have the elements that we see, for example, in our own Earth? This is the kind of questions really that. Uh, this new, brand new telescope, uh, the James Webb Space Telescope, it's going to enable us to start at the start answering, which is a completely exciting, you know, moment to be alive watching this. So our our viewers are seeing some of the the different types of um, of planets that we're looking at. Earth being rocky, and the first rocky planets that Webb will examine aren't really hospitable. The temperatures are a thousand <laughs> degrees or more. Do you expect we'll find cooler Earth-like planets, though, as part of this exploration? Yeah, that's a good question. Yes, there's all types of planets out there. Some some planets for which exactly you won't you wouldn't want to go on vacation to. Um, so <laughs> I, I, I word word you against that by on tickets to those. But yes, there, there's other planets that are temperate planets. In fact, my favorite exoplanet in the world, and don't tell my colleagues this, uh, <laughs> it's Trappist one. Trappist one, it's one of these cooler, this this it's a cool star that has seven temperate planets orbiting around them. And some of them receive the same level of radiation, same level of light, the same amount of heat, you want to think it like that, that we receive here on Earth from its star. Huh. So yes, we're, we're all going to be exploring cooler planets and some of them that have temperatures similar to what we experience here on Earth. So if, if they have atmospheres like ours, maybe they can even host life. That, That's a possibility. Uh, that is what is so exciting, I think, for the human brain to imagine. Uh, I love that you you don't want your, your colleagues to know that you already have a favorite in trapeze <laughs> one. Um, let's talk a little bit about the Webb telescope because it is seen as the heir to the Hubble, but obviously the Hubble is still operating after more than 30 years. Both give us a sense of how remarkable Hubble is and how the technology is so much more advanced now with James Webb. Well, let's start with the fact that you just mentioned. So Hubble has been 30 years orbiting and working its way through the universe. We expected it to be like 10 and, and people that spent like said like, oh, 10 years, that was like a stretch. 30 years going, it's fantastic. It speaks marvels of, of, our, of our experience as you know, building technology. But then Hubble has been a complete eye opener to what's going on out there in the universe. In, in exoplanets in particular, it has allowed us to observe the first atmospheres. We, we've detected water from our planets outside the solar system, from giant planets maybe, uh, but it has been an eye opener to, to what we should expect with the eyes that now, you know, Webb is gonna offer us to, to actually go to the smaller planets. But Hubble has been completely amazing and, and it gonna, it's gonna keep kicking science in and it's gonna work together with Webb actually because they observe different kinds of colors. So you can get like an entire spectrum on how these exoplanets look like. Nestor, you know, as we're, as we're seeing these images of space and we're hearing sad news here on Earth, it's, it's nice to think that there is the prospect of more and better, wonderful things out there. Really quickly, can you tell us anything about the equations that are behind you? Or, those aren't just for <laughs> show, I'm assuming? No, it's not for show. This is actual work that I, I'm doing uh, you know, that I have to deliver. It's related to web, some of it. Uh, so, so yeah, it's interesting. And I, I wanted to touch back on what you said. Yes, we humans are, can be amazing beings. We can get together and do these international projects like Hubble, like Web, to peer into the universe, to really dwell into the details of who we are and where we are going. So I think that's beautiful. You know, we have to recognize that and we have to celebrate that. So we, humanity can do great things, yes. Hooray for a cause for celebration. Nestor Espinoza, thank you. Thank you.